So today we are going to talk about arguably my favourite comedy movie of all time. It's nowhere near the best and it is not smart. It is nothing. It is a fucking dumb as fuck comedy and I love it. <laughs> So it's Beverly Hills Ninja, starring Chris Farley. This movie is probably one of my first memories of watching, I guess, a comedy as a kid. Because I was born in 94, this movie came out in 97. And it was one of those comedies that it was so dumb that it was okay for kids to watch. Like, it's still rated M, obviously. Like, there's still, you know, mature themes in this movie. But they're played off so stupidly that it doesn't matter what age you are. You can watch this film whenever you want. It stars the late, great Chris Farley, who absolutely kills it as Haru the great white ninja. <laughs> He is so fucking stupid. I love it so much. The plot of this film is in Japan, there's this particular, you know, clan of ninjas who have this prophecy that one day, you know, a great white ninja will grace them with their presence and will lead, you know, this particular clan into a really prosperous sort of future. Everyone who's in the clan who's grown up has always believed it to be them. Obviously, they're Japanese, so they're not, you know, they're not white people. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is that you become the great white ninja. It's not really necessarily about the color of your skin. So during the credits, you know, this family, they're out on their yacht, storm hits, waves crash, whatnot. Along the shore where this Japanese clan live, a baby washes up in a little chest. It's a little white baby and he's all tucked up and whatnot. And what do you know? That's Haru. <laughs> well, that's what they name him. They name him Haru. And uh, <laughs> just even from the start, like, because the credits are not over. During the credits is when they find the baby. You see him start to grow up a little bit during this. You know, he starts off as sort of like an adolescent where he's like a teenager. They're doing these, you know, martial arts practices with their, you know, fighting stick or whatever, whatever they call it. It's a stick of some kind. And uh, he constantly hits his brother or his stepbrother. He constantly hits his stepbrother with the stick because he just has no control over his, <laughs> over his skills at all. And then he grows up into full Farley, hits his brother again, but this time the stick snaps. <laughs> God, the stick fucking snaps and he's stuck there with two and his brother just tries to bash him. They do the thing where they go along and they're putting their hands on the hot coals, you know, it's a, like a pain tolerance type thing. Meanwhile, he's cooking kebabs on the hot coals. <laughs> but it's really fucking stupid. It's really, really funny. The ninjas have all passed. So every ninja that's there has passed. They get given this medallion. The golden medallion gets given to Gobei who is Haru's brother, or he's Haru's stepbrother. He is like the ninja, like he's the top of the class. The top of the class gets like the gold one. And Haru, unfortunately, he doesn't pass the class. He's the only one who doesn't pass the class. He doesn't get given the little medallion, but he's super happy for his brother. Like you can tell that, you know, he's got a lot of love. They make Chris Farley's character in this movie really lovable. Even though he's a fucking dickhead and an idiot, he's really, really lovable. He has got so much love for his family and for his stepdad and for his brother that it just kind of shines through in this character. So all the ninjas, they're dressed up, they're going off for their final sort of exercise. It's kind of like a guerrilla warfare type thing. And Haru is left behind and his sensei is like, you need to stay here. I need you to look after the village, guard the dojo. And Haru's like, okay, I will protect the village and I will guard the dojo. And he's like, and I will water the plants. I shall do as you say. I shall protect the village. I shall guard the dojo and I shall water the plants. It's just like, <laughs> then no one asked you to water the plants, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> While he's at the dojo, he's hanging out, he's put his little ninja outfit on, he's doing, you know, ninja moves and whatnot. He splits his he splits his ninja costume down the back. And this woman comes to the door, you know, and she's like, Hello, you know, I'm looking for a ninja, blah blah blah. And so they get to talking and then she has this mission that she needs a, a ninja for. Now Huru, of course, doesn't tell her that he's not actually a ninja, that he didn't pass the class because she's a gorgeous, gorgeous woman, and he's, you know, he's smitten, he's got a crush on her. So he wants to do whatever she needs. She tells him he needs to follow this man, Martin Tanley, who is, you know, doing some dodgy dodgy shit. And so off he goes. So the next day he's off doing ninja shit. He's climbing along the wall. 
dwarf where <laughs> like everyone can see him in broad daylight. He's got this black ninja outfit on and he's like tiptoeing along the wall. He hides in sort of like a bush next to this gate and he gets his little binoculars and he can see the car and he's like, aha, Martin Tanley, I can see you. And then as the gate opens, it latches onto the back of his thing and <laughs> drags him off the fucking... <laughs> drags him off to the side. So he goes in and then he comes out and he's like, fuck, I'm just hanging here on this door. Gets himself a little dinghy, a little blow up dinghy. Starts like rowing his boat, gets in there. Finds that Martin Tanley and his sort of like mafia goon or whatever, they're after these, they're after these money plates essentially. So they want to be able to reprint $100 bills as counterfeit money. So basically they need the originals, but the problem is the plates that Martin Tanley has are only one-sided. So another rival opposing clan has the other, you know, has the other side of the plates. Haru doesn't know anything about this just yet. This is what we're seeing as the audience. Martin Tanley shoots the guy, he falls off, you know, lands in Haru's little boat. And of course the police think Haru's the one who did it. Like a ninja is the one responsible for this shit. So he goes home, you know, and his sensei is like, you're an idiot, what are you doing? And he's like, no, he's like, this woman needed help. <laughs> and eventually like, you know, he keeps saying it, he keeps saying it. And they allow him to go to Beverly Hills. You know, he just complains and complains. And they're like, you know what? You can go to Beverly Hills. If you really want to try and save this woman or try and do the right thing, off you go, you have our blessing. His dad gives him a pouch full of gold. As he's heading off, you know, he's saying goodbye to everyone. Everyone's lined up to sort of do the like head bow, you know, goodbye. And then on the last head bow, he like headbutts the dude. <laughs> Gets in the truck and Gobe, his brother is like, oh, I'm gonna miss him. And his dad's like, no, you're not. And he's like, what? And he's like, cause you're going with him. Because obviously Haru is a fuck up. Like he needs protection. So Gobe has to go and use his ninja skills to help Haru, but not let Haru know that he's being helped essentially. Because Gobe is like a fucking unbelievably good ninja. He can do this. So off we go to Beverly Hills. And this is where the movie just gets so fucking good. He goes through one of the airport scanner things first you know you walk through for them to check if you've got any medals on you and it starts going off and he starts fucking like trying to <laughs> trying to bash it because he's never seen them before the airport security guy's like empty your pockets please and he starts pulling out like little ninja stars he starts pulling out like fucking swords and shit <laughs> from inside of his clothes oh it's a cracker he gets through airport security. He goes onto the plane. He's sitting there talking to this little kid. And the little kid's like, what do you do for like a job? And he's like, oh, well, you know, if I told you that, then I'd have to kill you. And the kid freaks out, runs over to his dad. And the dad's like, what'd you say to my kid? And the dude clocks him in the face, gets off the plane, goes to his rental car. This particular car that he gets, it's a convertible. And when you sit down and you shut the door, the seatbelts actually close on you automatically. And so the seatbelt comes down and he's like being choked in the car. So he gets his fucking knife out and like rips the seatbelt, starts driving along and he gets tailgated by some like rich white dude. He's getting tailgated, but he doesn't realize that this dude's just being an asshole. So he starts like swerving in the lane to try and block this guy from getting out, from trying to get like behind him. As the guy finally gets past him, he's like, hey, thanks asshole. And I He's like, no worries, like, because he doesn't get it. And he just starts calling everybody asshole because he, think he thinks that's what he's supposed to say. The valet at his hotel comes up and grabs the keys and he's like, hey, thanks, asshole. And the valet's like, what the fuck are you saying to me? Can I take you back? Oh, thanks, asshole. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> And this is where we meet Chris Rock. So Chris Rock's in this movie. He's playing sort of like a little little supporting sort of character. And he's so funny in this film. Like he, this is back when Chris Rock was sort of, I don't know if he was just at his prime just yet, but he was getting there. Like it was late nineties and he was still just up and coming, but he had enough of a name for people to be like, hey, Chris Rock, we love you. His character is very lazy. Like his character hates his job. He doesn't want to fucking be there. And he's trying to get like compo. He's trying to get like, you know, work compo for having a fractured wrist or some bullshit. Haru comes up to the desk. I would like to rent a room. I want this, this, blah, blah, blah. And obviously the guy looks at him and he sees that he's wearing these like rags and whatnot. And he's, he's like, unfortunately we don't take wampum or something. So like, I think he's assuming that this dude's like homeless and he's trying to get him to go away. And Haru's like, oh, okay. Well, do you take gold? And he just spills all this gold out onto the table. <laughs> Checking, someone take him to his room. And he goes to him and he's got this great line, which always cracks me up. Perhaps I shall send Dom Perignon to your room. I prefer to be alone tonight. Perhaps later I will meet your friend Don. 
God, fucking idiot. <laughs> Chris Rock is starting to talk to him. He's asking him things. You know, Haru lets him know that he's a ninja. And then he's like, you got to teach me some stuff. You got to teach me how to fucking protect myself. You know, I live out in the town. I'm waiting for someone to fucking rob me or bash me or whatever. He's like, I need a couple little moves. So he becomes essentially like a little protege to Haru. Now Haru's job from here, he's looking for Sally. So Sally was the lady from the start. He's looking for Sally. And he's walking around. He's got himself some new duds. He's got this like this tiger print jacket, some suit pants. And he's looking, he's looking schmicky. And he's walking along the roads. He's looking at stuff and he sees all these people with like long blonde hair and he immediately thinks that they're Sally Jones, the lady. And he runs up to him. Oh shit, you're not Sally. And then he finally goes up to one person. They turn around. It turns out it's fucking Fabio. <laughs> And then, what do you know, Haru bumps into her and he's like, whoa, he's like, hey, Sally, it's me, it's Haru Jones. She's like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> like, why are you here in Beverly Hills? Holy shit. Then he moves from there. We've got this scene in the strip club where Haru goes in and he starts dancing on the poles and then he starts getting really into it. He falls off the stage, slams into these mafia people's table and they throw him out. Meanwhile, Martin Tanley and his little goon, they're upstairs trying to get the plates off another person. They kill him and his goons. They throw them off the building. They happen to land on the ground next to Haru. And obviously someone sees this and they assume that he's the one who, he's the one who killed them. So again, it's Haru being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So he continues on. There's this moment where he, he finds Martin Tanley's house. He realizes that Sally Jones is not in fact Sally Jones. Her name is Allison. She happens to be the sister of a woman who was dating Martin Tanley and mysteriously disappeared. So she is trying to uncover that. That's what she needed the ninja for. Haru and Allison have had their little, you know, reconciliation where she she stops lying to him and he finds out he's like okay this is what we're really doing so her name is Allison we're trying to uncover the fact that Martin Tanley killed her sister it's not about the plates for her it's not about the plates for him it's about finding out and proving that Martin Tanley killed her sister and possibly getting revenge from here to a teppanyaki scene so <laughs> Martin Danley and his mate, they've gone to a teppanyaki, they're having dinner and whatnot. And Haru, his way of getting in there is by dressing up as a chef and he's got this Fu Manchu mustache and this hat and he's never done teppanyaki before and he fucking burns his face on the <laughs> Bets his face on the hot plate. He flicks a shrimp and it gets in between some woman's cleavage and he fucking grabs it and starts sniffing it. It's so good. <laughs> and then the mafia show up obviously to try and to try and kill Tanley because they want his plates. They leave from there and they go back to Haru's hotel, kind of like their hideout spot. Now there's a really funny joke, like a little recurring joke that keeps happening in this film. Because Haru is trained, not trained, but he's used to, because Haru is used to taking off his shoes before he goes into, you know, his home. Before he gets into the lobby of the hotel, he takes off his shoes and he leaves them to the side. And the cleaner takes them each time he does this. And it's such like a basic joke, but it just works so well. They make a plan to go to this ink specialist whose name is Chet Walters. He's being hired by Martin Tanley to print the counterfeit money once he gets the plates. Haru and Allison go there. Haru takes his place. So they drug him with, you know, some fucking mushrooms and shit. And Haru takes his place. He's dressed up. Haru goes to the warehouse. So they blindfold him. They put him in a van. And he's being really annoying because he's acting like Chet Walters. Chet Walters is very, like, jokey and very bantery. Does all this stupid shit. Be cool. Daily. Mind if I borrow one of these next week? I got a blind date. A blind date. <laughs> oh, Whoa, wowzer. He goes to the warehouse and he's trying to steal the plates. They manage to catch him. They stick him in the back of the van. And so they drive off and they're going to, they're going to a meeting. So Martin Tanley and his goons, they're going to a meeting to collect the other half of the plates. And in the meantime, Allison breaks Haru out of the van. He heads over there. He gets knocked out by accident when they burst through the door. They get in the cars, they drive off and they find Allison at a phone booth trying to call the police. So then they're like, all right, well, we don't have the ninja, but we've got Allison. So let's grab her. They take her off. The police show up. Haru's there with his arms up and he's got his little tattoos and they're like fuck that's him that's the ninja gobe jumps in throws a smoke bomb takes the place of haru anyway and then haru's down on his luck so the cops are gone gobe's been arrested allison's gone the plates are gone everything's gone he has a little heart to heart with his sensei through the through the plane of enlightenment he's like your heart is what makes you a ninja like he's like you have so much love and such a big heart he's like we could all do with having a little bit more heart like you so it's it's kind of there's a good there's a good message in this movie he gets g'd up by his Sensei goes back to the hotel, so he lands back in his plane of enlightenment, puts on his white ninja outfit, gets Chris Rock with him to take him to the warehouse. But obviously, because he was blindfolded, he has to do this thing where he's trying to recreate the sounds and the feeling of the car as his directions to this warehouse. Ah, this is good. I hear water. Now turn right. No. 
Now left towards the water. Yes. I think we're too close to the water. I, I think we should go back. You've led us astray. I didn't lead us nowhere. I cannot swim. Joey. Swim? Oh, my God, what's happening? Oh, Something's touching oh. my face. Joey, oh, these sea creatures. Oh. Help me. Head towards the mainland. Mainland? Yes, the mainland. The sea is foamy. You have wandered way off course. Joey, the wind is picking up. The weather in America fluctuates violently. Maybe we should go for cover. Joey, what is that smell? Pina colada. I like it. Obviously, they don't find it because Haru is a fucking spastic. <laughs> But Gobe happens to have escaped from jail. He knows where their warehouse is, so he drives them. And now we get our final act. There's a bunch of cool fights. Gobe is fucking taking out dudes left and right. Haru is there. Haru has to go and try and save Allison because there's a bomb. And as he goes to save Allison, Gobe is getting the shit kicked out of him. He's taking on like fucking 12 ninjas at the same time. And he starts getting the piss kicked out of him. Haru, he's like, you know what? I gotta go help my brother. I'll be back for you, Allison. He fucking somersaults off the top level of this warehouse and takes out, you know, the goon who's about to axe Gobe in the face and he gets super pissed off and he goes into like god mode and he's never been a good fighter or a good ninja or anything but to protect his brother he's gotten that like he's gotten that like mum strength you know like the mums who lift the car off their baby or whatnot he gets that I may not be the best ninja I may not be one with the universe but I will tell you this no one messes with my brother everybody will <laughs> And it's great, and it's this big fight. He saves Allison in the end. They get Martin Tanley, he blows up the cops calm, and we're all good and we're all laughing. And this movie is, like I said, it's stupid dumb fun. You can't look at this movie and be like, oh, it's super smart, like it is. It's genius levels of comedy. Like, it's not that. It is the kind of comedy that you can just put on and you don't have to think, and it's nostalgic as well. If you watch this when you're a kid, or if you watch this back in the 90s, you will still like it. This would be a very hard movie to sell to people nowadays. If this movie was made now, people would probably hate it. They'd be like, this is dumb, this is shit. Fucking poor writing, poor everything. But it's in that bubble of the 90s where lots of these kinds of movies existed. It was just, it was just commonplace for the movies to be like this. And because I saw it back then and because I have had the DVD for fucking years and years and years, I love this film. Objectively, this movie isn't that good. <laughs> but subjectively, I fucking adore this film. And every time I put it on, I'll laugh as hard as I fucking laughed the first time. I'll watch it with my dad and we'll be cacking ourselves on the couch. It is a fucking great time, this film. An absolute hoot and an absolute fucking roller coaster of a great time. So yeah, overall guys, I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. I love this movie. I love it so, so much. It's still funny to me. It's still as funny now as it was the first time I saw it. I can watch it anytime I want and still laugh. But it is, like I said, it's a bubble film. You have to appreciate 90s comedy to even think about appreciating this movie. So that's the review, guys. Look, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, look, Look, comment below if you've seen it let me know if you're keen on watching it let me know and yeah look click through to another video and let's just have some fun guys easy i'll see you on the next one